Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and today I'm bringing you some more news, tools and add-ons, etc. that I think you guys are going to really enjoy. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our first one. All right, so for first up, we have Gatwick Airport in London, Echo Golf Kilo Kilo. I'm going to give you guys a few seconds to sort of just check out what the default is here. Make sure you guys really soak up, check out the, uh, the different textures and really pay attention to how it all looks at the moment. And then now for the modded version. I did get a little bit of stuttering here. However, looking at it afterwards, the stuttering went away. So I'm not sure if that was just, you know, bad timing. I don't think it was the airfield. But you can see everything looks much, much, much better. Everything from ground markings, the fence lines, the buildings, the structure, the coloring, light posts. The tower so anyway make sure you guys check this out it is a free mod and i think it's absolutely fantastic for such a popular airport must have in your uh, sim collection so let's go ahead and move on to the next next on our list is a really cool and that's aircraft adjustment you can actually move your aircraft around so we've all had similar situations i'm sure in the past where you go to spawn your aircraft and there's another aircraft on top of you or you're facing in a bad direction or you're up against a fence or something weird you know some of the bugs that do tend to happen uh with starting the aircraft in this position the nice thing about this particular tool here is that it's got an ability to save an aircraft position so if you want to save a position very rapidly and load into it you can as you can see here I'm just sort of doing a test with the uh, current selection obviously I wouldn't want to start an aircraft here but now I'm going to move the aircraft over and then just load its previous position the save position that I have at this particular airfield and ask you if you want to move it you hit yes bam back to where the saved location was it also saved the position you can adjust the rate at which it moves the aircraft around so if you want it to move you know further or, or smaller you just change the value and it will skip or uh, to larger or smaller locations you can also rotate the aircraft um, so it makes it very very handy especially in some of the smaller airfields um, where again you may be stuck up against a building building or facing a wrong direction or just in a situation where pushback really wouldn't actually be there and you need to get the aircraft turned around this is kind of a neat way to do that um, and set yourself up for your flight so again really neat application very helpful tool um, i will leave a link as always in the description below if this is something that you guys wish to check out all right, guys, for the next mod, a lot of people have asked in my previous A320 videos how I changed the cockpit livery. So I'm going to walk you guys through that now and show you how to get it all done. Okay, links for everything will be down in the description below as always. So first thing we're going to want is we're going to want to go to flightsim.2 and we're going to want to pick a livery. He's got quite a few here. So let's see which one we got going right now. We got uh, that one there. So let's see here. That's black and beige, I think. Actually, it might be this black, black, and black. We can go all dark. Oh, I think this was the one I had. Black cream. So let's do... Which one looks nice? Let's do this one here. Okay, we'll, we'll grab this one. Well, here, we'll do a full dark cockpit. Just to, just to make things interesting, right? Alright, so we're going to download this. And the link I'll have in the description is to this page right here. Okay, that way you guys can sort of select what you want. It's going to be the same principle for any aircraft. So we'll let this finish downloading. I'm not sure why that's taking so long right now, but it is. Um, and then we'll get into the next step. So while that's doing that, let's go ahead and exit out of the simulator because obviously we can't be changing things while the sim is active. So I'll do that. I'll get right back with you guys. All right, so as you can see here, we got our mod downloaded and unzipped. So if we open it up, you can see we've got two different types here. This folder here, this will be used if you are not using the Fly-By-Wire A32NX mod for the A320. If you're not using that, I highly, 
highly recommend it. Um, it basically makes the aircraft, turns it from the default aircraft that's missing a ton of features um, and lacking a lot of performance into a basically a full fidelity borderline study level if not study level aircraft so again the link for that will be in the description below just in case anyone doesn't use it um you know and, and if you're interested in learning how to fly the a320 i have a guide that you can find by my patreon site or by making a ten dollar donation or more um that will walk you through step by step every part of you know flying the aircraft from tucson over to los angeles so you get a full flight experience step by step um, so don't hesitate if you guys are interested in flying the airliner. You just, but maybe you've been on the fence about it. Highly recommend it with this mod. Okay, but anyway, back to our cockpit liveries. So the reason why I mentioned that is because we have the A32NX installed here. Okay, and if you notice his naming scheme, he's got a bunch of Z's right in front of it. And there's a reason for this. The reason being is this is all the live or all the mods that are currently installed in my flight simulator. Got a bunch. Most of these are liveries here. Okay, but there's a couple different mods, like there's Cessna 152, there's a couple different others, different aircraft, things like that. Not sure what the heck that is. Um, but um, as you can see here, I have a cockpit mod for the uh, TBM 932, and I have a TBM 930 actual aircraft mod, a performance mod. Okay, so you always want to make sure that the aircraft changes come before delivery changes so the easy way to do that is just to make sure all of your cockpit liveries go down to the bottom if we had it on top for example if this tbm 930 was above this one it could either mess up the mod or we wouldn't get the livery that we're looking for okay so there's two ways to install this i recommend using mod linker that way you can easily swap between the two which is what i'm going to do or take the one that you want and just drop it in just make sure that you remove the one that already exists so in our case we're going to come up here Okay, and you again, here's the cockpit livery I have installed right now. I'm going to remove it. And you can see it's gone from there. Now I'm going to come over. Let me open up one more directory here. Just to see how many I can get open at once. Let's go to my mods. This is my mods folder. And I'm just going to grab this one that we have here and drag it on over. Okay. And then we'll minimize it. I'll come back over here to my mod. And I need to refresh my list. And let's see here. This was the one that we just installed. So we're going to throw that one in there. And you can see it pops up down here, down below everything else. And just because I have it closed, we'll update my A320 too. And now you can see we have our full cockpit. Now, there's a catch-22 to this because apparently I missed a step. And I, I don't feel like the instructions were quite clear on this. But I figure I'll save you guys the time here. I needed to install both of them, okay? Um, so I had, you can see there's the main with the flyby wire. So, um, I'm sure that's probably why he had them labeled zero one and zero or zero zero and zero one. So make sure you have both installed. Okay. Otherwise what happens if, if all you get, if you go to install it and all you get is the forward panel. Okay. The glare shield, um, not the glare shield. <laughs> yeah, whatever this thing, you guys know what I'm talking about. I can't think right now. Um, then you guys um, did the same thing I did. You need to install both of them. But now let's go ahead and test out some functionality and make sure that we haven't lost anything with the mod just to show you guys that as long as we install it correctly, all should work fine. So we're already rocking and rolling right there. Okay, let's see here. Everything else still working. We can do a fire test. Oxygen supply, boom, and you shouldn't have any problem with lights. You can see they are illuminating behind it. And a lot of the cockpit liveries do adjust the light color as well, so keep that in mind. Um, now, something to be thinking about too when you do these is some of them may impact performance, okay? Um, the A320 is already kind of a performance hog when it comes to the cockpit, and that could be just optimization issues. It's no fault of anyone right now. I mean. The thing to remember, guys, also, um, I was actually just talking to someone on YouTube about this, one of our subscribers or viewers, um, and it's important to remember that this, yeah, we're all working, everything's working great. The sim is still very much in its infancy, okay? Everyone says, oh, it's been out since September, oh, and they had the beta and the alpha. That doesn't mean squat, guys. When you go live scale like this, it, it it's 
years of ironing things out because you have so many different configurations so many different softwares so many different third-party development and i mean just there's so much like i am honestly very impressed that we have vr four months into the sims activity like that's that's impressive it really is and functioning the way it does you know a lot of people are still struggling with it and you know pulling their hair out but again this is a very huge scale project so anyway my point of that was if you you know be wary of your performance and if you start noticing some degradation and things like that in any of these mods start pulling some mods out and seeing if they're causing your problem because it's not just the mod changing the texture those textures have to be optimized the more texture load that you add to the generation of the scenery the more problems you could have stuttering frame lo frame rate loss etc etc okay but anyway so that's how you install a cockpit livery and this works with any kind of aircraft doesn't matter what aircraft you're doing the principle is the same make sure that you put a z or something like that at the bottom just to make sure you know you can name it however you want as long as it starts with a z that way it's always at the bottom of the load list right you want it to load last okay all right guys well that's pretty much all i've got for you for this one so let's go ahead and move on Alright guys, so the next one I want to show you is a new mod that I just found the other day um, called Pushback Zoom. And this thing's pretty cool. And all it requires is a microphone to use. And then you control your pushback directly from the uh, cockpit of the aircraft using only voice commands. So let's go ahead and check this out and see what it's like. First step here is obviously let's get our aircraft ready to go. We're not going to worry about flight plans or anything like that. We're just going to get it started. Sort of simulate most of it here. I'm not exactly following everything to a T. We're just sort of getting going. We're gonna need that APU. Just to simulate how this could work in a real world situation or in a real flight situation. Oops, hello. Gosh, I hate the zoom. I really do. There we go. Let me get back up here. It's probably driving you guys all crazy right now. Like, what is this guy doing? All right, let's do that. On those emergency exit lights. Got the beacon light on, wing lights on, nav lights are on. Taxi light leave off for the moment. Don't need the strobes. All right, so we're just going to wait on the APU for a second. I'll be right back with you once the APU comes alive. All right, so obviously we have no flight plan entered, so this is all simulation. But all we're going to do, and you can start this application at any point. However, I have noticed a bit of stuttering if you start it too soon. But the stuttering goes away the second the aircraft starts to roll. So again, and it's just outside stuttering. That's a little weird. All right, but let me go ahead and show you guys what we're talking about here. Let me get another file explorer up here once again. And let's see here. If I can get to the right directory, that would be helpful. All right, so we have... Where are you? Oh, I may not have put it in here yet. Interesting. thought I did. Let's go back to downloads. Yep, so pitchback zoomer. And then we're just going to launch the EXE. Now there's nothing that you have to interact with here, so you can just drag it off screen, click it by on screen, doesn't matter. And keep in mind I'm going to be using the same microphone, and so within 30 seconds of launching the app, 30, and you can do this again before you hit fly. So you can do, you can launch it, then launch Microsoft Flight Simulator, doesn't matter. Um, although it does use Sim Connect, so I would launch the simulator first, but you don't necessarily have to be in the cockpit. And you can see automatically the tug's going to move into position. The jetway automatically pulls off when the tug starts to move. And we haven't requested a pushback yet. He's not going to start doing anything pushback yet. request not possible as the state is not idle. See, I, it's because it recognized the command. They heard me say it. So I'll let you guys just watch from here so that way I don't say it in the wrong time. Okay, so this is the stuttering I was talking about. It does this when it's hooked up. And you can see it's trying to, to, to execute its thing okay and but that's just a graphical issue okay so you can see it it's not really affecting anything i could still be down here programming the aircraft it's not jumping the screen around it's just the outside terrain that gets a little weird but even then it's really not bad just certain things so now let's go ahead and execute <clears throat> ground from the flight deck good afternoon captain all doors closed and checks completed release brakes Brakes released. Okay, pushback begins.
Turn left. Okay. Start turning left. You may begin starting the engines, Captain. Stop turning. Okay, we'll stop the turn. Turn north. Turn facing north. Okay, I will turn by 90 degrees and bring you on a northern course. Turn facing east. Turn facing east. You are already facing east. <laughs> you need to pick another target direction. Turn 180. Turn facing 180. Okay. I will turn by 90 degrees and bring you on an eastern course. Turn 60 degrees. Turn left 60 degrees. Okay. Start turning left by 2 degrees. Okay. Stop pushback. Okay. Confirm parking brake set. Brake set. Okay. Captain, pushback pins are removed. Now it's your turn. See you again. I will close this. Okay, so keep in mind a lot of those errors, I guarantee, were me talking too fast. This is only the second time I've tried it. And once I tried it for the first time, I'm like, absolutely, I will use this. You know, um, the computer voice, yeah. But you know what? Pilot to ATC uses the same thing. I'm sure as this develops on, we'll find ways of changing the voices, things like that. But that was so much nicer. And that's saying something because I love pushback helper. I use pushback helper on every single one. Like this guy right here. Okay, now I'm just going to use it for the jetway because it still beats using the in-game ATC to get the jetway connected. But I didn't tell it to disconnect the jetway. As soon as I started the pushback, um, the jetway automatically disconnected. So it works out really well. Um, and then my verbiage of trying to set a cardinal direction, uh, or my cardinal direction was fine, but when I tried to tell it, you know, uh, uh, degrees, I was picking a compass heading degrees versus the number of degrees you want it to turn. So if you want it to turn left 60 degrees, you say turn left 60 degrees. Um, and then again, I think I said that way too fast because he said, you know, turning left two degrees. Um, so that was the clarity of my speech, you know, that, that was incorrect. Um, but anyway, I thought you guys would really enjoy this. I am stoked about this app. I hope the developer keeps going. It comes with a manual that uh, gives you a list of all the commands and, uh, you know, things that to do. If for any reason within 30 seconds, if the cart doesn't automatically go to where it's supposed to, you can say request pushback, which honestly, my opinion on that is I think that should be default. Um, I, I wouldn't want the... That's the only thing that I would change about this app is that I would say leave the cart out of the way until you're ready. You know, I think it'd be kind of fun, you know, ground from the flight deck, you know, flight deck, go ahead, uh, you know, requesting pushback or whatever that, you know what I mean? Have ground from flight deck, uh, ground from the flight deck, you know, be the first part to start the conversation, then say request pushback, then execute, you know, continue down the line. But this is pretty neat. I mean, it, it definitely adds something, and I'm using the same microphone I'm talking to you guys on, so, you know, th there was nothing fancy about it, just boom, you just have to make sure it's your, de whatever default microphone you have set in Windows, that's the catch. Make sure it's set in Windows as your default microphone, okay? But anyway, so I've got one more for you guys, and then we will call this one a day. I hope you guys are enjoying these, because these are pretty cool. All right, so our next one here is we're going to be using a tool called FS Tool. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and launch it here. This is a, another application. It's got a uh, README for joystick mapping. And it's got a mapping capability. Okay, um, but read through this because it's got something specifically for the uh, Bravo throttle, throttle. There it is again. Throttle quadrant. Um, God, this AI copilot sucks. What what are you doing? What is he doing? This is AI flying, not me. I just want to point that out. This is not me. Go team. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, we're up. <laughs> All right. 
So here's the cool thing. Now, when you drag it across the screen, it does this weird jumping thing. Don't sweat that. That's normal. Um, but so first thing you can do is you can um, grab coordinates. Okay, so if you had a specific place that you wanted to teleport to, you could jump to it. Okay, but what I really like about it is it gives you the sim rate. So we got our current sim rate, setting your longitude, latitude, altitude, your heading, your airspeed, you know, parking brake status, flap status, and nav lights. All right, so what we can do though is what I like this for is to adjust the sim speed. So you can sit here, and I use this a lot in my videos, you know, in between segments, but you can click on it and then hit activate. And it works pretty well. I mean, I, I don't ever have any lagging issues, any crashes. I haven't seen any. And I used this on my flight the other day from, um, what was it, LAX to Fort Worth. Um, and then you simply just, you know, when you're ready, getting ready to, you know, start the next segment or whatever you want to do, simply hit activate, set it back to where you want, and boom, you're back on track. So it's a really handy tool, makes using the sim rate a little bit easier. I'm not going to worry about the slew coordinates, um, I don't have any set, but if you had coordinates specific to, that you wanted to jump to, you could do that. Um, but uh, anyway, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this little uh, video today, a couple different tools, new add-ons, some uh, new things to play with, and uh, I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.